Eh oui, monsieur, et nous avons un guest avec nous aujourd'hui à la, qui c'est Jefferson Noel. I mean, like, uh, don't let the name fool you. The guy don't speak a damn thing in Creole. <laughs> so it's like, uh, I would say, I mean, like, I don't have a, I haven't have a name for this type of Haitian yet. Eh bien, moi, pas les 40% Creole, lui. Ah, get. Ça va sans cache, surtout. Et pas sous blanc, et pas sous blanc qui a Pour blanc, et puis Eh bien. Et bon gringo, et puis Moi, c'est un haïtien qui fait aux États-Unis. So, Babette, uh, my peers, they don't speak great Creole at all. So, tu sais qu'on gagne, il est plus passé. Et be careful, parce que c'est un haïtien. Well, hey, we can see your English is definitely better than your Creole. Hey, yes. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? You don't miss a damn thing. Ah, no, 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 no. I would love to have spoken better Creole in my That's life. That's what you say because Trust you me. don't. No, 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 no. But what there for my senior? No, 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 no. The, the language is beautiful. What there for, what there for moon? Oui, qui ça? That's, that's the only reason why you want to speak Creole to go after the, the, these Haitian women. Eh bien, eh bien. Eh, I thought we here to talk about politics, right? Yeah. You talk about religion. Yeah, you know about politics. That ain't politics so fun, guys. There's no politics without women. As a matter of fact, you know that's what's coming up next. You can see right now. Right now, the whole country is upside down because of women into politics. Yeah, so something now, like listen, that. Mm -hmm. uh, Jefferson. Dime. No well, man. Este este tipo habla español también. Eh. Me dice dime. Un un poquito. <laughs> un poquito. Un poquito. Un poquito. Eh. Un español y se me ya creo. Español y me ya. Ah, pues. Anyway, hey, let's get to. Good day, Monsieur. Eh, el amigo Monsieur, a presente no Jefferson Noel. I mean, uh, American Haitian. Um, uh, he's gonna try to speak Creole a little bit, but nonetheless. Uh, we're not here fun. for, we're not here for, for language competition, especially not Creole, especially for me. But nonetheless, this guy is very interesting and intriguing, interesting. And I like the fact that you have young generation of Haitian. Uh, well, I'm not saying Haitian, but American first and Haitian second and doing big things in this country because they decide all the nonsense that's going on. And these guys, they don't care. They don't listen to the nonsense. They say focus and they do what they do best. For example, a Mbalbay Noel Shospul introduced Tetli to introduce himself, but nonetheless. And what I picked up right quick from him, this is a guy that's very successful in his show. He has a Babeshop show where over 300,000 people listening to him. And, 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 and he bring them something that, uh, practically not anybody easy to do. It's not easy for somebody to build a platform of over 300,000 people. And once people take the time to listen to you, it's because you are saying something. Do you understand? So it's to me, it is, it is success. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the good thing about it is, You're here with us tonight, and we're going to talk about it, how you started it, what pushed you to it. But nonetheless, the guy is a brilliant kid, you know, brilliant kid. I don't want to talk about his accomplishment. I want him to do it himself. So, Jefferson Noel, welcome to Watch Shill Anderson Show. Nous guérons ça avec nous, Stanley Fofan, et nous guérons ça avec nous, Mano Bouzin. No, I'm sorry. Mano Bouzin. Do you understand what Boozy means? I'm quite familiar with that term. Okay, but his last name is Boozy. Mm -hmm. Not Boozy, Boozy. But you can <laughs> see the... Même le papa l'écrit, mais vous comprenez. I could I could hear. Oh, why I'm so confused all the time. <laughs> eh, when I'm... And, and, and I wish I could change his name. You understand? So... But, no, Paul. It's not that complicated. Actually, it's Jefferson Christmas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Noel. Papa Noel. That's what they call me. So, That's right. Jefferson, yes, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing excellent. Today Welcome a good to the day. show. Hey. Tell, me about, tell the people about yourself. Well, I'll be succinct because I know we have a lot to cover, but I'm a professor at Florida International University. I teach public speaking. I've been a, pu I've been a professor for five years. Previously, I've been, I was teaching at Florida Memorial University, South Florida's only HBCU. Also, I'm a four-time published author. 
Um, so I love to share information. I love to empower people. I love to get the community involved. And also I'm the founder of Barbershop Speaks, where we engage in intelligent discussions inside barbershops and beauty salons. Because the barbershop, I see it as the community's classroom where everyone is both the teacher and the student as well. And I'm really excited about the past eight years since I started Barbershop Speaks, how far we've come with our dialogues. Uh, we've spoken in shops all across Dade, Dade County, but also in Orlando, in Washington, D.C., in Philadelphia, in New York as well. We've held conversations on financial literacy and mental health awareness and the government and criminal justice, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I do want to correct one thing that you said in the beginning, the people that come, the people who listen to our show on the CW, they don't come to listen to me per se. Yeah. It's not necessarily about me or the wisdom that I'm yeah. sharing, yeah. but it's about the guests that I bring on because I believe in the collective wisdom of yeah. the community. Yeah. And I, and that's what the barbershop is. Okay. And regardless of who you are, you have something to share. You have something to bring to the table. And I think that's why people listen to the show. So what you guys discuss the most in the in the show, in the barbershop? I would say, me, when I go to my barbershop, I know what we discuss. Well, <laughs> I don't think I want to know what y'all discuss. The, the way you said it, I don't think no, I want to no, know no, what no, y'all no. discuss. Don't ask me. I don't I'm think... asked right now, you're not the host. Hey, listen, don't off, ask me. off camera, off camera, you can tell me what y'all I discuss. Mean, sometimes the camera is open. I happen to bite it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, the camera, so, the camera is <laughs> so, so yeah. practically, when you guys, when you're doing a barbershop, you guys choose a topic or we just like, or based on your guests and you guys flow on the topic. Yeah, we usually come in with the topic. So let, let me. Guys, que nous bouer? Nous bouer? No, 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 If you want to supply the liquor, then we'll be more than happy to drink while talking. Calais on your sauce. Don't worry, it's okay. Uh, yeah. so, 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 so how you guys flow with that? Yeah, so when we first started Barbershop Speaks, I didn't know what to talk about. I didn't even know what I was doing, to be honest. Okay. I just knew that the barbershop was that place where we can, where it's one of the most diverse places in the community. Where someone who's eight will be sitting next to someone who's 18, who's yeah. sitting next to someone who's 80, someone who makes 30,000 a year, sitting next to someone who makes 300,000 a no year. Woman there. there sometimes it's women because, rarely. yeah, rarely, right? The but, single mom bring their kids. Yeah, correct. They, they, they correct. And right. But and, majority of the time they leave the boy and they get out. The, the, a lot of times that's the, the case. Boyfriend. Correct. And yeah. so the barbershop happens to be this unique, diverse place where there's constant conversations Is happening. Is there some barbershop that they don't even allow women to remain in there? I believe I know some of them do. Yeah, not in the shops that I have had events at, but I could imagine I could yeah, imagine I mean, that. Because it was a guy moment thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's like our cave. It's yeah, like our yeah. safe space this where is where we talk safe, where we could where yeah. we could share our thoughts and ideas, no matter how crazy it the is. Same way they have their beauty salon. I hardly see a guy unless it's oh a yeah, there's, there's definitely. I never seen a guy. But but here's the thing: salon. we don't only do events in barbershops. We also do it in beauty salons as well, and it's and open. I, and then you guys are very careful when you guys are doing that. It huh? is open to both sexes, and when we do conversations at barbershops, many times more women come than men, and when we do it in beauty salons, many times more men come than women. And yeah. so that's also a very interesting thing that I noticed. Uh, but is there never a fight inside the barbershop in your show? Not a physical fight, but there's always there's uh, also uh, a, a verbal fight. Yeah, of course, that's, of that's course. Barber shop. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the point of of the shop is where it, it's a free exchange of ideas without fear of judgment, and that's why what we do is so important. Okay, all right, good. So, and like I said, what's um. Do you feel like the community needed something like that? That's why oh, you yeah. decided to start something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they 100% needed. Because many times, you know, life is busy. And the shop is a place where people do talk. But sometimes, to your point, sometimes a lot of the conversations are just way off of the things that actually matter to people. Exactly. And so the, the difference between what we do and just the everyday barbershop is we're intentional about the discussions that we're okay. having. And I bring in experts on yeah. the topic, yeah. right? So we do select the topic in advance. Yeah. Yeah. We select the topic based on what's the pulse of the community. And you, you did ask earlier, what is the topic we speak about the most? And it's financial literacy. Because ultimately, 
people are always thinking about how can I make money? How can I keep money? How can I, what are the, the best things to do with my money? And so we have a lot and of conversations. And this is something that's new though. Yeah. Because before people were never interested in financial literacy though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think people were always I, interested in having money, but not interested in the literacy of money. And I would argue, I, I do agree with you. That's very yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. Because true. one true. thing I realized myself, and I knew it from the beginning, since I came to this country when I was 14. Right? Mm-hmm. And me, from where? Uh, from hate. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> my, mm-hmm. my is, I try my best with that accent, but that shit is tenacious. No, no, no. Keep, keep your accent. Accent, accent tenace, man. No, no, no. Keep your accent. It's accent beautiful. Accent tenace, but, <laughs> but anyway, but that's one thing. Mm-hmm. It, I realize because I'm, uh, when I came here, and I know my parents was very limited. Mm-hmm. I know the best thing they could have done for me is just drop me here. That's yeah. it. But beside that, if I need to have any kind of, I would say, advanced knowledge of how this country itself function, mm-hmm. I would have to get the head out from Haitians. Mm. That would not be the best place for me. And fortunately for me, that I met, I was able based on certain things that I was doing, there was a need in the Jewish community. Mm-hmm. And once there is, when you need it in something, that's when you become valuable in something. Mm-hmm. And I automatically say, you know what? This is the best place to learn everything that I need to know about the United States of America. Not even in my history class. Mm. That's interesting. And I learn everything that I need to know about America. Mm. And I would say, thank you, over God, today. Yes, I'm very successful. Mm-hmm. And I would say, I'm not going to be a hypocrite about it. I'm, it's because of them. Mm. I learn the way that this country operates through them and money. Mm-hmm. If I was waiting for high school to learn about money, oh no, no, I would never learn about money. Yeah, yeah, you know. I learn about money, guys, from working for the Jewish people. Mm. And then that moment I see, ah, this is why. The Haitian community is the way that it is. So what do you think was the most important lesson? Oh, my friend. I'm very curious. Money. They eat, breathe money in their home. That if you listen, the moment they push that baby, Mm. they start telling that baby, listen, we're going to make sure that you know what is financial literacy and mm. they do not let their kids learn financial literacy neither in any school no college but guess what though keep in mind mm-hmm. in their school that's mm-hmm. one thing they're adamant about mm-hmm. they tell you see sometimes i see like people say do not tell the kids what to do listen them they tell you what to do mm-hmm. they tell you hey you're gonna follow the family tree Mm-hmm. And they say, you know what? Here's the way that it is. Mm. If you're here today, it's because of this policy we established from way before you were born. And you're going to have to stick to that policy. Mm. Which is, guess what? The financial policy. Mm. Meaning that they don't take life for granted. Yeah. And in my country, I was born in Haiti, right? Where in Haiti? I'm curious. Port-au-Prince. Port-au-Prince, okay. And I was raised in the province time to time because mm-hmm. of my grandma. And I can see the Jewish in my grandmother. Because she used to, you know, all these Haitian the entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You know? So my grandma, I used to see her value money. Mm-hmm. Here's the funny things, guys. I go back and I see back and complain. I see a Jewish guy, see a penny in the street, he's going to pick it up. Hmm. But meanwhile, as when I was growing up in Haiti, I see a penny in the street, I will not pick it up. You know why? Can you guys tell me why? If I see a penny in the street, I'm not going to pick it up because you know why they tell me? 
ou pas le semblait pauvre. Non! Ouais. Ça veut dire que je vais manger, qui va manger, son piège peigné en yé. Si je prends ce lugar où je vais manger. Do you understand? And now, after I learn from these people, I understand the value of a penny. That's the reason why there's penny stock. <laughs> <laughs> now, a penny on the floor, this is a stock on the floor. Combien ici? Not even ici. How many black people hmm. that know? Large when a penny on the floor is a stock. Because there's penny stock. Yeah. And sometimes penny stock gets you what? Get you multi-million dollars. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of you playing the lottery. If you get lucky, you get lucky. Mm -hmm. You understand? But I'm, I'm curious, Jefferson. Uh, when, when you say financial literacy and you're having those conversations at the barbershop, mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some of the major concerns? Because financial literacy can mean anything. Are you teaching them how to trade options? Are you treating, teaching them how to, you know, uh, play the stock market mm -hmm. or maybe how to balance, uh, uh, a checkbook or a saving yeah. account. Uh, you know, what, what's the conversation? What's our primary concern? Yeah. I, I could think of some of our most recent conversations. Um, one of them was about credit and the importance of having good credit because mm -hmm. a lot of the wealth that's built in this country has come from home, home ownership and through business. And if you have bad credit, you can't buy a house and you won't be able to get a, a business loan initially. And because there's not a lot of education around credit in our community, a lot of people lose out on two of the main, two of the biggest drivers of wealth. And so that was one of our most recent conversations that I think was most important. Um, another conversation is taxes because that's one of the biggest expenses you'll ever have in your life. And a lot of people, they get their education about taxes. Well, one, the tax code is extremely difficult to comprehend. Yeah. Let's start with that. But, you know, nowadays people get their advice about taxes from social media. Yeah. And so you have people saying, if you purchase a G-Wagon for $300,000, you get tax then you can write it off on your taxes. Because of the weight. <laughs> and then, and yeah, because of the weight. But in reality, they didn't write that into the tax code for you to have a G-Wagon so you could flex on South Beach. They wrote that into the tax code <laughs> for, for, for like, trailers. For trailers. For or companies. For actually. companies. Or if you have a, a farm. Purposes. If you have a farm and you want to buy a big tractor trailer to produce goods, yo, right? But, yo, and so that, that conversation so was, crazy. was powerful, was necessary for the people in the community because they're like, oh, that's not in the tax code for a G-Wagon. But here's the thing, people can't even afford a G-Wagon. So you talk about people like where I say like a, a good 90% of people can't even afford a G-Wagon. Correct. But you telling them if they buy a G-Wagon, exactly. they can get tax <laughs> credit. Correct. And, and so, and, and that's the, that's the danger with a lot of the things that we see on social media when people appear as if they're experts because they have a fancy car or they live in a big house, but they say, I have it because of their knowledge, but they have it because they fooled you. Yeah, <laughs> like that's exactly. why they have those oh, things. Oh, oh. Listen, they listen, you. Here's a funny thing though. Mm -hmm. The guy come and say, oh, you know what? If you buy my book, you're going to learn how to get rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was a, that was a but book. You don't even understand. He's, the, he's not even rich. You can, when you buy the book, this is where he's gonna, gonna become go. rich. That was a book that said, if you're gonna get rich, what the freak you selling a goddamn book for? That was, a, that was a book that it was called How to Make $100,000 Selling Books. And guess how much the book costs? $100,000. <laughs> so you buy the book, you open it, and it's like, gotcha. And, guess what? and imagine the guy sell like, imagine the guy sell 10 books. He's already making a million dollars. He's making a million dollars just like that. And so people are constantly getting fooled. And so what I like, what I do in the barbershop, um, like I said, there is collective wisdom in the shop. At the same time, there are people who are actual experts on these topics. And just because you have a personal experience, that doesn't make you an expert yeah. on the entirety of the topic. Correct. And be, because of what I do, who I am, the, the status, let's say, that I've reached, I'm constantly in rooms with people who have achieved a lot in, in life and people who are willing to share I bring them to the shop to share with the community. Now we all have a conversation. And you together. know, one thing I realized, mm 